Welcome, everybody. So, uh, unfortunately, Albert Ostermeyer, he cannot attend social fictions today. And therefore, we have a, a do tank intervention. Um, my name is Satu Herrala, and together with Angelika Fink here, we are making this do tank, which is a platform happening during the whole Spiel Art Festival. We have Jacob Friend here from Montreal, and he will be doing a relay interview, and he will explain you what it is. In, it's very easy to learn. <laughs> and uh, just to introduce Jacob, so he comes from Canada, but he's touring internationally and often seen in Europe or, and in Japan and in many other places. He's an author, performance maker, performer, and a co-artistic director of PME Art Group. And so now I hand over to Jacob. Yes, so um, <laughs> this is an exercise uh, called Relay Interview that uh, I've been doing for about the past year. Uh, I've done it in different uh, circumstances, in theaters, in schools, uh, for a teaching thing, uh, in conferences. And uh, uh, maybe the main thing I like, I mean, it's ridiculously simple. It's so simple. And uh, maybe the main thing I like about it is that you can learn it in about a minute. Uh, and then and then we can do it. And uh, uh, when people ask me what it's about, I, I say a few things. Uh, I say it's about how to be yourself in a performance situation, uh, which maybe isn't so interesting here. Uh, but also I say, uh, I say it's about um, what we think and why, and do we know what we think, and do we know what we think about different topics. And then it's also about what is a good question, or what do different questions do. And uh, the way it works, uh, there's two chairs, as you can see. Uh, one person sits in this chair, uh, and this chair is empty. And uh, you don't like this already, but that's okay. <laughs> and uh, the person who sits in the empty chair asks a question. And uh, uh, this person answers the question. The moment uh, he or she is finished answering, uh, they get up. comes and sits in the empty chair and asks another question. And it just keeps rolling like that. Uh, we'll do it for about half an hour uh, today, but you can do it for hours and hours for the rest of your life, really. And uh, maybe the only other thing I say is that um, you're under no obligation to answer. So uh, uh, one of the things that's good is uh, if you get out of the chair fast, and if you don't want to answer, you get out of the chair fast. And in real life, if someone asks you a question you don't like, Maybe out of politeness, you feel obligated to answer, but due to, due to the conventions of this game, uh, you don't have to. You can just get out of there. Uh, so I will start. I'm sitting here, and if anyone is willing... Oh, and uh, the, theme, the theme of today's conference is the art of protest. So maybe we could try and ask uh, questions in and around the theme of the art of protest, which I think is quite an open theme. So uh, I'm here, and if somebody would... Uh, be willing to sit and ask me a question. And I'll just wait. Hi, Jacob. Okay. Um, how do you define protest? I, I think, for me, protest is effective. Or maybe I would define it by saying protest is something that's effective. So it could be effective in terms of getting the attention of people in power. It could be effective in terms of getting other people uh, who see the same way as you to, to join you in your protest. It could be effective in terms of convincing people who don't uh, see the same way uh, as you do of the validity uh, of your position. So I would say a, a, a protest is something that's effective, that either gathers people around you to, to protest with you or that gets the attention of people who have some power to uh, change the situation. Now we both have that? No, you stay here. Oh. <laughs> and now someone else sits here and asks. Oh, OK. <laughs> For a long time, there have been a lot of fightings internationally from the people and also inside from a lot of initiatives. Now, 
it's called protest. If I protest against something, it's something which seems to be established. Do you, it's it just, it's affirmative, the protest. Do you think in this way of protest? So the question is, do I think that protest is affirmative by its nature? Yeah. No. <laughs> when is the last time you were protesting? Three, four weeks ago. in the uh, surrounding of the Occupy uh, meeting here in Munich, which was a little bit boring. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was like if children begin to articulate something. For me, it was, uh, I wondered a lot about this low status of articulating something, politically articulating itself, as if it would be a tabula rasa where they start from. Do you feel personal responsibility for everything which is screwed up in this world? Yes. I asked if Sato feels personally responsible for everything which goes wrong in this world. And I do. What do you think is the point where a protest um, goes or changes into political reality? Mm. Uh, when it reaches a um, certain volume, when uh, uh, there is enough people that joins the protest um, and I think there is um, there is power in numbers. Come on. <laughs> um, maybe you did see the last night a play of. Um, Castellucci, and so do you think it's a sort of protest? Is it just a way to protest against anything, throwing the bombs on the face of Jesus? Oh, could you repeat the so last So last one? night in the yeah. Kammerspiel, there was the yeah. play of yeah. Castellucci, yeah. and so there's one scene yeah. when the kids arrive on the stage and throw the bombs, you know, on the face of Jesus. Do you think it's a protest that can really significate have any signification and what signification does it have for you? If kids throw bombs to the face of Jesus, what yeah. it could be? Is it a protest I mean, for you? Does it? I, 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 sorry, I didn't see the play, okay. but um, um, well, I think that um, it could to throw a big to throw a bomb to somebody's face that means to destroy his identity. I, I think, and and perhaps it could. Um, I, I I I think it could be a kind of protest, but at the moment I I can't say what kind of protest. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you 
think that protests have to have a message? It mustn't be a message, but it, for me, it must have some significance. What would you like to protest against? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> um, um, I think I would like to protest against the fetish of autonomy we have, that is, a message I would like to bring out is uh, that we need more recognition of our mutual dependency and our vulnerability, not as being just us for ourselves individually, but that we depend on each other and that we have to take care of each other. And I see that far too little happening. I think of protest as being a left-wing thing. I've always associated it with like the left, but then I was thinking about these protests against the Castellucci show, which I guess come from, well, I don't, which come from a, a Christian perspective. Uh, and then I thought maybe actually it's a myth that the left protest and actually the right wing are much better at protesting. Do, do you think that might be true? And can you speculate on, on why or why not? I don't have any idea and I am what you're saying emphasizes or says that protest has to do something with ideology and I would say that that's not the case. I think that protest has something to do with something that's deep inside people and they feel something's wrong and when they suddenly notice, oh, I'm not the only human being in this world thinking that way. So it's not like um, first asking oneself, am I left-wing or am I more right-wing? Am I then better in protesting? It's just looking around oneself around and see what's my opinion and are there any, any alleys I can form with the things that I think that are important and to start a movement out of it. So what's the difference between promoting an issue that you see is wrong and you feel very badly about and theater of protest. Promoting issues and protest. I think it, I'm not sure about this, but I think it might have something to do with the balance of power or something. Like, if you have a kind of power in a situation, you can promote the issues you want to, um, uh, you can use whatever power or cultural capital or Whatever, whatever resources you have to promote an issue you want to. 
And if you don't have that power to promote the issue, then you need to kind of, so let's say with, if you're somehow within a system that has the ability to promote the issue, you can promote the issue. And if you're outside the system, you, you don't have the tools to kind of promote it using, using the system, so you have to protest against it uh, to kind of try and like break the issue into the system or, or break the question. I think it might be uh, something about power, but I'm not sure I'd actually hadn't thought about it before. You can go more than once. You yeah. can? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Because um, <laughs> I want to ask, was, did you hear something today uh, in this event that changed how you think about protest or revolutions? Yeah, I, I, I heard people Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, and, and, and if, the if the What's if your question again? Tell me your question. Yeah, if there was something today that, that uh, changed how you think about protests or revolutions, and if, if yes, then what, w what was it, if there was something? I heard people trying... Um, uh, no, it didn't change my opinion. I felt that there was, in fact, this difference between people who have issue actors who see and feel and react to things and feel some impulse because they're people of action to want to do something, so they create a show that promotes ideas that they think should get more publicity or more should affect other people and that an individual act of protest, of, of, of explaining an issue becomes, I've heard, a protest, and I don't really think that's a protest. Protest, although it comes from the, the part of that word, to pro, as opposed to contest, there is something about promoting um, something in the word protest, so I, I, I like, that's one of the things I thought about today. But I didn't hear anything that would actually foment action on people's part, which is what I think protest is. I think I have two questions. Because you've just brought me you now linguistically looking at protesting. That means with you, so protest. I want to say to test something. So do you consider that the word protesting, it's just to be pro, testing something, the behavior of people, or whatever. And do you think the colors, like we saw today in the performance, can be this form, such, you know, a sort of a pro testing the reaction of people? So it was a performance that moved me very much. So, you know, just putting this word protest in a different way. I think it's in, um, I think with the colors, I, I like that. I don't know if I can answer your question, but I, 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 I like to think Before. about it like that. And, um, or I just, just from what I learned from you. I think with the, yes, I definitely think they were testing something with colors and they, and that that has to do something with, uh, with the kind of perception you usually, perception mode that you have often in public spaces. So I, I guess it was a t kind of test to in also to insert certain, to uh, emphasize or slightly underline a certain aspect of that space, for example, in that case, uh, certain color, to kind of enhance your awareness of the space that you are in or the environment you share with other people and the situation that you are at or to um, also to 
perhaps question like how do you behave in public spaces and what is visible there, or what is not, what is accepted, what kind of behavior is accepted and, and what is not. Because for me it was protesting, you know, I mean, even the way you just put make continue, just the colors, the way you, you know, just put the colors in this environment. And I know very well the co uh, loca location that you've chosen. Mm. So, and I know maybe you don't know even if it's a restaurant where you chose. It's one of the very significant, it's protest, but it was because we are talking about the left protest, but mm. it is the right one. It's so one of the restaurants where Hitler uh, liked to go. Uh -huh. Yes, it yeah, was yeah. the green one, you know, yeah, I think yeah, with green and with the yellow. Shelly, yeah. So, yeah, did you know about it? So, it was something, you know, so I was just wondering whether it, you were protesting, you know, just putting colors and just having some nice atmosphere just as a protest against what the location used to be. So it does, you know, and it's one thing. And then the colors, you know, you're protesting also, I mean, the yellow in the English garden. So it was, you know, more or less dead already. And then you put this very, very juicy yellow into it. So it's what, what you know, it was also protesting because we always consider protests as something political. And so I liked mm -hmm. it very much but you mustn't be always only political. You can also be protesting some positive things mm. to the audience. So, so it was a protest as well, I think. Mm. Yes, I think that that was something that the artists were working on, although I'm not sure if they were aware of that, that uh, uh, the history of the Schelling Salon. Yeah. <laughs> but now I think I should go. <laughs> no. Thank you. just to break up this situation. <laughs> uh, uh, in one particular city uh, where people wanted to protest, but they couldn't because they knew that if they would go out and start protesting, they will be arrested. Um, so what they did, they went to the main square of the city and they formed a line uh, queuing for, uh, to a kiosk uh, to buy coffee. So there was like all of a sudden there was line to this kiosk uh, of like many hundred people who were just pretending to stand in line, but in fact they went out to the streets to protest. Um, I think that this kind of humorous take and trying to kind of play with the situation, uh, which is dangerous, which is uh, potentially very dangerous um, is also performative and also interesting in a way of uh, you know like from the artistic perspective um, can you tell us a funny story <laughs> about the protest please tell us a funny story <laughs> I, mean, I do write poetry I never wrote anything like a funny story because I consider my life as a funny story as such. So I was supposed to give you just one of the story of my life, so just to make it, um, but I think the subject was protest, so in giving you a funny story, uh, it should be only, I mean, also I have just to uh, consider the word protest in it, is what you mean by this? Um, Oh, goodness me, I mean, it's really, it's very tough, so now I should be just sort of uh, transform myself into an artist and try to find a funny story, and nobody's going to laugh, so I think it will ah, be funny already. <laughs> so, um, we'll nobody's, um, okay, no. funny story, what? <laughs> the thing is that, uh, for me, the word funny as such, I don't like it. I just like to, uh, the word uh, happiness more. So what makes me, I that's right, no, funny is good. And I, I, I've got it. So when my daughter was one year old, I was in Vienna, and I'm a real European person. And my little daughter, uh, my husband worked at the theatre in Vienna, and she uh, just she was one year old, and she just started to learn some languages. We spoke Polish and English and German at the same time in my house, and some Yiddish. And my daughter was confused a little bit. So we went to the Stadtpark in Vienna, and there were some Fauen, 
that means, uh, what do you call it in English? You know, they have birds with a huge, colorful uh, uh, peacock. Peacock, mm -hmm. peacock, that's right, sorry, peacock. And uh, my little daughter, uh, you know, looked at the birds, she saw them the first time, and then she just, um, I said, oh, look, Fawen. And I just said, Fannen, because I've just learned German, so for me, Fannen and Fawen was the same thing. And she said, oh, yes, Fannen, Fannen. And then the next day, she went with her dad to the same Stadtpark, and she saw it, and she looked at the father and said, I just learned one word, it's Fannen. You know, so for me, it's not funny for you, but it was funny for me, just, you know, that the Fawen and Fannen, and it's one, one thing. And the other thing when I learned German was the word Scheiße, you know, shit. I was in a family, uh, I was in Bochum in the so-called, uh, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was a camp. And I met a professor at the Bochum University. And uh, he just uh, wanted me to see some culture, invite me to his house. And his mother came from the Krupp family. I will never forget this. So it was the house, very nice, very elegant. And I've just learned, you know, the word for flowers, scheiße. And so I went to this house, and it was a beautiful garden. And I just wanted, you know, to be very nice. And so I walked into the house, and I said uh, in English, uh, you've got beautiful uh, uh, scheiße in your garden. And you can imagine the woman and her face. That was one thing. And the second thing is, <laughs> in German, you know, that the, uh, you've, you've, got, you've got, it's a very vulgar, because it's funny maybe as well. And y you know, the word Vogel, which is bird, and there's a verb for it, which is very vulgar, you know, to fuck, sorry, it's Vogel. And uh, in Poland, we used to make this bird in the snow. So you know, you just lay, lay in the snow and then you put with your arms, and you do it. So I thought I just have to do something better. And I went with Jochen, and he has never, this professor has never been in the snow. So we, I just showed him, but you know, you can have fun, just not being very modest, etc. So we did it, and we came to the flat, and I said, ah, we, we, we haven't given Vögelt. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's just about language and linguistics. For me, it was very funny. For the people, it was not funny at the beginning, but later on, it was very funny, so everybody laughed. So, you know, just two funny stories. Is it enough? Oh, goodness me. Okay. <laughs> Do you consider yourself politically engaged? And if so, how? And if not, why not? Um, yes. Um, not enough. And um, also in... Um, um, okay, so there is a story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to a street protest and I'm, you know, burning with the issue and I'm really, I'm really feel very emotional about uh, the issue and very, you know, very strong. Um, and at the same time it happens during the winter, so it's minus 20 outside. And I find myself, you know, very carefully selecting a wardrobe for going to a street protest. And I'm really like, you know, looking, so do I have to wear that jeans or these jeans? And like, what's like w warm enough? But I know also that there will be TV present, so I want to look good on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and I know that, you know, like my like warmest hat is not like making me look good. So I'm like <laughs> thinking, you know, I, yeah, it's good. And, um, <laughs> and I think, you know, and at this moment I realize, you know, that this kind of, ambivalent situation is pictures very well what we are actually doing here. And uh, I felt absolutely horrible about that, but at the same time, I think we should kind of say that this is really the reality and try to deal with that. Um, 
one of the things I found about the relay interview is that the longer you do it, uh, the more people participate. Uh, so I'm sure if we'd done it for 24 hours, we would have gotten everyone here <laughs> uh, participating in Relay Interview. Uh, we're doing it again tomorrow from 7 to 9 at, at the Dew Tank. Uh, so if anyone would like to do a, a slightly longer uh, Relay Interview, uh, we can do it tomorrow, Monday, from 7 to 9 at the Dew Tank. Uh, we can choose one at the beginning tomorrow. And uh, yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, oh, uh, sorry. Um, anyone can do this. Uh, do it with your friends at parties, do it, yes, do it as part of your process. Uh, anyone can do this, it's easy, and uh, I, I think it uh, can send you in some interesting places, and, and thanks. <laughs>